Hi, everyone. Welcome to Zygote, Cleveland's all access open studio, uh, printmaking studio. For those of you who've never been here, we have a variety, we offer a variety of different tools to make different types of prints. But tonight, I'm going to show you my process of making a day glow screen print. So follow me. So Cleveland actually has a very, very large printmaking studio, which is really cool. Um, and right now I'm taking you to the back of the studio where I'm going to I'm going to show you my process. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to coat your screen with a photo emulsion. So here's a, a plain screen and I'm just going to pretend, but here's a scoop coater. And what you do is you pour the emulsion in. It's a sticky, um, almost like a pudding like uh, coating that's light sensitive and you put it on your screen just like this and you coat your screen and the reason why I didn't do it out here I usually do it in the dark room is because it's a light sensitive process and obviously we're in the lights so and I didn't think that anyone really want to see it but I will show you what it looks like coated so this is what it looks like with the coating on it. And it's basically, you just take the emulsion, you put it in the scoop coater, and you put it on your screen. So here is our light exposure unit. I am going to put this image of the Beachline Ballroom that I took onto the screen. So you set it down on the light exposure unit. And then you set your screen on top of that. I try to line it up just like that. And then I set So you want your contact to be very tight and that's the reason why I'm going to put a little bit of weight on it because you don't want any of the light coming through the sides. Um, you want to make sure that it's a tight Fit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shut this. I'll turn that light off. I'll ramp this down. I'm going to turn the vacuum on now. It's really, really loud. But what it's doing is it's sealing um, so that no light gets in around the, the um, where we, we don't want it to go. So it's actually making it as tight as you possibly can to the glass so you get a perfect um, contact. So I'm going to turn that on and then after I turn that on, I'm going to set the timer four minutes and that's um, the that's the amount of time that it takes to expose the image onto the screen. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that outside of here. I just want to make sure that this is on and has a good contact. I don't know if you can see it. The vacuum is actually sucking it. And now I'm going to turn this on. I don't know if you want to grab the So since it takes about four minutes, I'm going to talk to you about what's actually happening a little bit more in depth over uh, back in the studio. 
Someone asked what the emulsion is you're using? I use McDermott Plus. Um, but the shop uses a new one and I haven't tried it yet and it only takes 30 seconds or 40 seconds to um, burn. And so I think I'm gonna start trying that um, and experimenting with that. But for the demo purposes, I've been using this for 10 years. So I didn't wanna just start, try something new tonight. Um, so yeah, McDermott Plus, it's great for, uh, they make different emulsions for different things. So if you're printing on paper, if you're printing on um, fabric, there are different um, emulsions that would, you would use if you were printing on a different surface. So that's why I usually print on paper and McDermott Plus is just uh, perfect for what I use it for. I'm just gonna set my stopwatch. Cause it's, a, it's like, it's probably gonna be a couple minutes, but um, what's happening right now is I took a photo of the Beachline Ballroom and my film positive, the emulsion is a photo, um, it's a light sensitive process where everything that's black will be, will um, shoot out when I shoot it out in the booth. And so that's when I'm printing, that's what will print black. So whatever you see black here will print black. Um, whatever, so whatever um, white, the light will hit and harden it. And whatever's black, it will stay soft enough so that when I spray it out in the spray out booth, it will just come right off of the screen. And that's what creates the um, stencil for that. So I, the way I make my um, film positive is I just print out a paper, uh, laser print paper, and then to make this transparent enough so it, the light shines through, I just take oil, and I'm not gonna do the whole thing today, but I'm just gonna show you. You just spray oil on it, and with a little rag, you just, uh, you could even rub it just like this. And that will make it transparent enough that the light will shine through. So once you have your film, once you have this transparent, once you put all of the um, oil over it and make, make it transparent enough, then what I do for mine, um, and I just like the, I also um, use like a Photoshop to uh, manipulate the photo a little bit, but then I actually go in and I hand color the background with a Sharpie. I'll hand color the background with a Sharpie if I want it really dark. Well, that Sharpie is not working, but this one is. Or I'll scrape away toner. And that will make it also transparent enough that will, um, create the white, the lightness that I want it to. And then for little fine lines, I use a pencil. So I go in. Just like that. And that will block it out enough so I can get um, the bricks in there because otherwise the bricks wouldn't show through. So, it should be ready. Let's go check on it to see if it's ready to blow out. Does anyone, did anyone have any other questions? Okay. We'll check on it. Yep. All right. So basically, whatever was white or transparent 
harden on the screen. And whatever was dark or black on my film positive will blow out. And it didn't harden, so it's soft enough that when I spray it with water, it will blow out of the screen. And that's what we're gonna do right now. I'm gonna take you to the washout booth. So you can see it sort of has a haze. So when I wash out, basically you just take regular hose. It's a little loud. You can already see the image starting to come through. So this is always the moment of truth um, for any screen printer. Sometimes it, sometimes this step doesn't work. So I always coat two or three screens ready to. <laughs> so you can see. When I screen print this, all of these parts will print black because there's a space. This hardened, and so it created the stencil. So it's pretty cool. And then to just to make sure that it's it was um, blown out the way you want, you just hold it up to the light and make sure. For demonstration purposes, we're just gonna leave that for right now. I already have one prepared that's ready, just because sometimes this doesn't always um, work out. So, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about my day glow process. So the paint that I used, um, is Dayglow paint. It's from their Screaming SRX um, paint series. I used Aurora Pink and Signal, Signal Green. So you can see right here, this is my test proof print. And I didn't necessarily like the way that that came out. I, um, with the Dayglow paint, it dries very quickly, so you have to hand paint it. Um, if you screen print it, it, it dries very quickly. So you wanna hand paint it. And I didn't really like the way that the green came out by printing the image before and then painting on top. So I painted it and then printed it. So that's how I decided what, what levels I was going to um, paint first before I screen printed and what levels I was going to paint after I screen printed the image. So to get my, um, this is just a stencil that I made. And I just cut it out with a um, X-Acto knife and I set it down. You can see I have little registrations right here. Just set it down like this, traced it with a pencil. Oh, oh. Sorry. No problem. Traced it with a pencil and then went in and hand painted everything that I wanted to um, print, everything that I wanted to paint before I printed over it. So for example, the ballroom and the vintage shop, the ballroom, the vintage shop, tavern, and beachland, I thought would be better if I, and um, the Godzilla and the, this creature, I thought would be better if I printed before so we get those really cool black lines over it. Um, another decision that I made after a proof was 
I didn't, I was going to do the background blue, but I didn't like the way that came out. So on this proof, I just tested out to see what it would look like as solid black. And I thought that that was a, a better option with the solid black. Someone asked if they can see the day glow paint jar. I can, um, I don't have it with me, but I can absolutely post, we can post it. Um, so you can see what it looks like. It's, if you go on their website, dayglow.com, it's under the screaming, screaming um, SRX. And there's, uh, that's what I use whenever I'm um, using my paint uh, and, and silk screen. So they have a really cool variety of green, pink, red, yellow, um, and green. And obviously like other colors too, but those are the colors that I use. Someone asked, have you ever used the Speedball Day Glow? I have not. Um, I'm, and the reason that I, okay, the reason I started using Day Glow is because um, Waterloo Arts has a Day Glow show every year. And Day Glow is a Cleveland company. And so um, I just love the fact, and that's how I found out about Dayglow Paint. I never knew it was a Cleveland-based company. Um, and then when I was in the Dayglow show, it was the first time I started um, experimenting with Dayglow Paint. And so that's the reason I choose to use Dayglow because it's Cleveland-based. So you and Dayglow.com. And then it's Screamin' srx and they have a variety of um, colors but day glow paint also for all of you printmakers out there they also have a uh, litho ink so if you're experimenting with lithography they have they do offer a litho ink which i think i'm going to do a collaborative on a collaboration on um, soon so This is so. This is what your um you want your your screen to look like. You want to be able to see the light through all of the places that you want to print black. And that's why it's called a film positive because a negative would be opposite. Um, when you're screen printing with photo emulsion, it's a positive because everything that you see is what, what you see is what you get. It's not opposite. I don't know if that makes sense to anybody. So what I'm doing right now, this is just, um, this is just regular screen printing black ink. And I'm putting it at the top and then I'm just going to do what's called a flood coat where I'm getting all of the ink into the um, stencil where I want it, where I want it to print. So this is just my flood coat. And what I'm printing on is just a piece of uh, plastic, thin plastic. And I'm doing this for registration because I want to be able to see where to place my paper um, so that the green and the pink fit in the places that I want it to fit in. So basically you just put some pressure down and pull. And I know my sister Eileen loves that sound. So basically that's the image. And because um, this ink dries quickly, and if you're working on, uh, on printing a, in a, a large edition, you always wanna make sure that you do another flood coat. And that just makes sure the ink's in there because, because it can dry quickly. I'm just gonna crack this up. And set this down. So I don't want to be messy. Okay. 
So there's several different ways to register. This is the way I do it he here at the studio. And especially with something that I'm only doing because this is a hand painted thing, it's an extremely limited edition. So I register each one by hand. And basically what I'm doing here is making sure that everything is lined up where I want it to be, and that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. So I have the paper where I want it. Set my screen back down. And just pull, push and pull. And if your paper sticks, you just gently pull it. And that's pretty perfect. There's a little gooby on there. So um, obviously I would want to, if I was doing like a series, I would probably clean it off and make sure that it's, um, or a, an addition, I would make sure that that gooby isn't shown, but th that's something that probably only a few people would notice. Um, so I want to show you that. And then this is the, I have another one. But this is the finished one. If you want to see the difference. So there were a couple decisions that I made. I decided that I was going to go back and hand paint some of these. Um, just because of registration. I just thought it would be uh, a better effect if I hand painted these after with the Dayglow paint and a paintbrush. Questions? Yes, and um, it, it does. I, I've never, I've never done it. Um, I've never done that, but it does dry fast. Um, I just know from working with it, even when you're painting, it dry, it dries ex incredibly fast. Um, and so that's why I chose to just hand paint it. But I'm sure if you took the time to maybe, um, really experiment, but it would all, it would all be experimental, I think. Um, I think I have some print. So right now, we're gonna walk into Zygote's gallery. Um, this is normally where Zygote has all of their shows and it's a really cool space. Um, so it's just an awesome space where they usually have like, Different shows are sitting, they were get, they're getting ready for their off the wall holiday sale. And that's what all, a lot of these artworks are in here. Um, and it's a, it's, it's a really incredible space if you ever get the chance to come to a show or a virtual show. So we have another question. What's that? You're screening the black and hand painting the colors, right? Correct. So I want to tell you, on this one, I hand painted before on some of them, and then after on some. On this one, I hand painted after. And then on these, I hand painted before. And then screen printed. So sometimes, it's not always before or after, it just depends on what I'm, um, what effect that I want to get. Did anyone else have any other questions? Yes. Can you use glow in, in the dark ink? I've never used glow in the dark ink, but that sound, that uh, just a couple lights just went off in my head. That sounds really cool. Um, no, I've never used glow in the dark ink. Any other? Okay, so now I'm going to show you what these all look like. I think that they're really cool in the regular light, 
Um, but it's sort of cool how they take a different life in the black light. And also if you're wearing like a 3D glasses um, for your person. And then here's what it looks like. It's so cool. It's like my favorite part when you turn the black light. So cool. I just love how they, it takes a totally different life. They almost look like they're on light boxes. Very cool. So cool. Very cool. Very cool from Bellamy. Very cool from Carolyn Arbor. Thank you. <laughs> and this is just, yeah, that one's the, the big one. The big one's amazing. I did want to mention all of these were taken at the Beachland Ballroom. Right. So. That just finishes up my Beachland seri series. Thanks everyone for coming to the demo and um, hopefully that you enjoyed it and learned something new. Um, really appreciate everyone's support. So thanks a lot. Bye. Have a good night.